talking about just before we went to the break. Tim, stepping down, catching the market a little bit of a surprise. It did catch the market with a surprise. It, uh, borrow shares initially fell a little this morning. They've recovered uh, somewhat now. They're up uh, close uh, over 1% now uh, after the general market sort of moved up uh, throughout the day today. But that news did come as CEO Mark Selways to exit the business. And um, he has made some positive changes on the business over the couple of years. There has been some significant restructuring in Borrell's business. Mm -hmm. uh, he's been trying to improve their manufacturing processes. And uh, we've seen some closures and exitings of some of their non-core businesses. But for Borrell in general, it really is that weak construction and housing market and conditions at the moment, which is really affecting the business. But uh, this particular stock will have upside potential when that does eventually eventually turn around. In terms of Borrell's strategy, they're really looking to build up their core uh, cement business and concrete business here in Australia, uh, though investors probably a little concerned about the fact that in terms of cement importation is becoming key in this area and Borrell don't have much of a uh, don't have much of a foothold in the importation in terms of cement, uh, but they have been adjusting their building uh, products portfolio, really just uh, reacting to market conditions. As I said, really poor housing starts at the mm. moment. We've seen them reduce their brick production and also uh, exit some of the businesses such as their Queensland roofing. But they are looking for growth options. We've seen them move into the Asian plasterboard market. They've got manufacturing there in China and that has a good track record uh, and that business is quite strong but the market in there at the moment is a little bit soft but that's potential for future um, strength. In terms of investing in Borrell, probably in the short term uh, conditions in the housing market probably not ready to turn around as yet so if you were buying borrow shares you probably would be looking for the medium to longer term waiting for both the Australian and the US construction and housing uh, market to really turn around. Yeah I suppose that is the big question mark over borrow isn't it? It's just when are we going to see that sort of turn around in those markets. I want to get your thoughts Grain Corp uh, coming out with some numbers. It's a company that it's doing pretty well I mean there's so many sort of uh, intangible I suppose variables going on when you look at this sort of a, a space but the earnings growth seems reasonably strong and certainly seeing a very good reaction on market their shares up over seven percent at the moment it's a difficult business to predict mm. Grain Corp uh, I mean this this profit today has surprised the market it's one of the best performers on the ASX 200 up almost seven percent as uh, they really boosted first half profits by over 50% to 133 million. And the market's really being buoyed by the fact they upgraded full year guidance as well by uh, around 12% to uh, 185 to 205 million. But uh, Grain Corp really is a volume driven business. So this results on the back of uh, strong volumes in storage, handling, and exports. Uh, the business has been strong over the past two years. Uh, we've seen production levels in grain across Australia sort of uh, back at similar levels that we saw previous to the GFC. Uh, but looking forward for Grain Corp 2012-2013 are probably going to continue to be strong. The company did note that 2013 they're expecting to be a strong year. Uh, but that does assume that these uh, favourable seasonal conditions does continue for the business. They've had a great two years over the past but uh, their ha analysis by the Bureau of Meteorology um, they're expecting a high chance of some significantly drier conditions over the next couple of years in Australia. So that could have an effect on volumes for Grain Corp. Uh, there's also a little bit of uh, M&A appeal being built into Grain Corp at the moment. We saw a significant jump in share price uh, back in March. If we have a look at one year graph of Grain Corp, uh, you can see here back in March when uh, Glencore made, uh, made that bid for Viterra, uh, the stock price jumped significantly. And probably what we're seeing in Grain Corp at the moment is these past couple of strong years of performance, as well as this M&A appeal, is really being built into the share price at the moment. So 2012, 2013 is likely to be strong for Grain Corp. But if we do see a bit of a pullback in sort of conditions in seasonality wise in Australia, it could have an effect on their earnings looking a little, uh, looking a little further down the track. And Tim, I just wanted to get your thoughts quickly on the, b the broader market performance. The start of the week continues to be, I suppose, relatively uh, heartening considering the week we had last week up about seven tenths of a percent. It's good to see the market extending yesterday's gains today and it's really being driven by the industrials in the energy sector today. Uh, really, I mean, US and European markets were higher, but there was no real significantly good news that boosted the markets. I mean, I think most of the moves were on the back of the Chinese comments. They're looking to boost growth, but there really wasn't all that much detail in those comments. Uh, today, we're seeing mining services companies. They're really boosting the industrial sector today. We've seen mining services beaten down quite significantly over the last month. Some of those 
those big uh, mining services companies have underperformed the, the broader market by anywhere 7 to 17 percent. So today some of those big names such as Monodelphus, it was up close to 7 percent. Ausdrill, uh, Campbell Brothers, they're all performing very well today, up sort of 4 percent wise, and they're really boosting the industrial sector. Uh, we saw oil break that losing streak that it's been on. Um, it's still below the $93 level, but it's really benefiting the energy sector today, which is also up over 1 percent. Uh, during the week, we've got probably uh, very little economic data, so we will be looking globally for our leads. And uh, what we're seeing is not a whole lot of conviction in buying in the markets. Volume remains uh, pretty average, really. I think a lot of investors might be thinking the Aussie market stuck in that sort of 4,000 to 4,400 range. And now that we're at the bottom of that trading range, uh, some investors might be looking to slowly start buying back into the market. But today, a good performance, um, up around 0.6 of a percent.